What's up everybody, Camero here, and welcome to part 80 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at dialogue portraits. First, we're going to look at a basic way that we can display them using text commands, and then after that, we're going to use a different method of displaying them using the show picture command, and then finally, we're going to look into a little custom method that I used for Pokemon Splice to make it easier to display dialogue portrait images. With all that said, let's get into it. So, what I have here is a little basic Professor Oak event, and when you talk to him, he just says, Hey there, I'm Oak. Now, I was thinking it'd be kind of cool if we could display Professor Oak's picture while we're talking to him. And that's what I mean by dialogue portraits. Basically, displaying an image based on who we're talking to. So I was thinking it'd be kind of cool if we could show Professor Oak's face when he's talking to us. And fortunately, this is very easy to do using text commands. So for those who are already familiar with text commands, you know that this slash B will make the rest of the text display as blue, but there's also a couple other text commands, one of them being slash F, and then brackets. Slash F displays an image in our game's pictures folder. So if we go into our game's pictures folder, which once again is from the root directory, just in graphics, pictures, pretty self-explanatory stuff, there's an intro oak.png here. Intro oak seems like a pretty good image to display while oak is talking to us. So in the brackets, we can just type intro oak. There we go. So now, if we talk to this event, we will see Professor Oak. And he will t show up while he's talking to us, which is kind of cool. There we go. We've got a dialogue portrait for our professor. So he says, hey there, I'm oak. Um, we could do better, though. As you'll notice, this picture is gigantic. It's displaying his whole body. Well, what if instead we made it so that way it was cropped to only show his face? What we could theoretically do is go in and edit this image so that way it's cropped down. But there is another solution. Instead of doing slash F intro oak, what we could do is just slash FF. What this does is it only displays the top leftmost 96 by 96 pixels of this intro oak. So what we should see is instead of the full body, we should see more of like a cropped like square around his head. So let's go and play this now. We've changed it to slash FF. So let's take a look at our new dialogue portrait for Professor Oak. There we go. So we can see his head, we can see like his shirt a little bit, his hands. That's a bit better than displaying the whole body, right? And what's really nice about that is that it's consistent. If you do slash FF for other pictures in your game, it'll always be 96 by 96 pixels. So you'll have a little consistent dialogue portrait for whoever's talking to you. That's pretty cool. Now, let me show you another way that you can do this. What you can do is instead use a show picture command. I personally dislike having to add like commands at the start of every message. So for example, if Oak was to say more things to us, then we'd have to add, um, sorry, let me finish this. <laughs> He's saying, what's up? Yo, I'm, it's Oak, what's up? You should say, what's up, boy? Anyway, so what we would have to do is type slash FF intro Oak at the start of every single message. And I was thinking that's a little bit inconvenient. Um, so we're gonna use another method. And this is all up to personal preference. If you don't think this is that inconvenient, then hey, more power to you. Feel free to use this in your game. But let's try using a different method. Instead of using slash FF intro oak, what we can do, let's get rid of those, is a show picture command. So for picture one, we can put intro oak. Now, as a fair warning, this is not going to look great because we still have some more work to do. But let me show you some of the pitfalls of not using show picture correctly. I'll also show you an example of show picture working well. I've got it set up over here on Misty, so check this out. Let's uh, let's run our game again. And uh, let's take a look at the show picture command, shall we? First, let's talk to Misty, because this is a show picture command set up properly. Hey there, look, I'm the player. Look at that, it's showing our character. They look pretty big. And look, it's Misty, she's talking to us now. Look at that. And look, the opacities swap depending on who's talking. That's kind of cool. Now let's take a look at this event here that isn't properly set up. Hey, I'm Oak floating up in the void. What's up? And he continues to stay there up in the top left corner. See, that's pretty bad. 
The reason that he's staying up there in the top left corner is because we didn't call erase picture. If you do show picture and then display text, you should always be certain to call erase picture afterwards. And the way that it works is every picture has a corresponding number. So picture one is intro oak. We should make sure to erase picture one afterwards. If we made it so a picture two was intro oak, we should erase picture two afterwards. Now check this out. Here's how this Misty event is set up. Uh, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because it's using my custom command that we'll talk about in a little bit. But at the very end here, we erase picture one and two. So how did I set up these pictures to look better? This intro oak was just floating up in the top left corner. What we could do is we could go in and move it until it looks good. So we could set the coordinates to be like, you know, 160 by, you know, 200 or whichever. But instead, through the power of image editing software, we're going to make it so much easier on ourselves. What I would recommend you do is you bust out an image editing software of your choice. You could use Microsoft Paint. You could use Paint.net. I do have a tutorial in the past about the basics of pixel art where I believe I recommend Paint.net. Uh, I personally am using Photoshop. But anyway, that's besides the point. What we want to do is we want to make an image that already has our characters um, lined up properly. And the way that we can do that is by making a image that matches our game's resolution. So our game, the screen width is 512 and the screen height is 384. So what I've done here is I've made a 512 by 384 pixel image. And what we can do now is just drag and drop our sprites in here, line them up how we like, and then just do show picture and select the image and everything will look just fine. So let's go into our games folder. I have to go to my Pokemon stuff real quick. Believe you me, I have a lot of different Pokemon folders. But right here in my portrait tutorial, graphics, I'm using Pokemon Essentials V18. So I'm, I have a trainers folder here. If you are not using Pokemon Essentials V18, what you'll want to do is instead go to characters for this. But trainers, and let's find our Professor Oak trainer. He should be around here somewhere. There he is. Let's make it so that way this is what shows up when we're talking to Professor Oak. What we can do is just take this guy, copy him, paste him into here. And he does look a little bit small, so let's resize him a little bit. And this is all up to personal preference here. I like it when they're a little bit larger, like this, in the frame. But some people might think that that looks too big. So what you could do is make him 200%. You can, here you can mess around with the scaling and settings all you like until it looks good for your own personal preferences. Anyway, let's make it so that way when we're talking to Professor Oak, he's on the right side and he's kind of just standing there looking like that. I think that looks pretty decent. Now let's save this into our games folder. We want to make sure that it doesn't go into the trainers folder though. We want to make sure that this is in our games pictures folder. And you'll see here that I already have them set up for some of our main characters and for Misty. So let's just make a new one here called Character Oak. Cool. So now let's make it so that way instead of show picture intro oak, it shows Character Oak. There we go. So now this will look properly aligned in our game. And then afterwards we call Erase Picture. Let's see how that looks. Talk to me, Professor Oak. What do you got to say? All right, let's just boot up our game. Here we go. Hey there, I'm Oak. And he shows up on the right side of the screen. What's up? I think that looks pretty good, right? And then we call a race picture at the end. Pretty nice. Let's make it now so our character shows up as well and has a little back and forth conversation with Oak. I think that'd be kind of cool. So let's do show picture one and we'll make it call character mail. Now, Pretty soon, we're going to look into a way that we can make this even better, because you know that when you make a new Pokemon game, you can select male or female character. So what I was doing for the longest time, it's pretty crappy, is I was using a conditional branch and checking if my player was male or female, and then displaying a different picture based on the result of that conditional branch. But I've made a custom method, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But first, let's just show a basic example, and then we can get into the cool method. Anyway. Let's uh, make sure at the very end of the event that we erase picture one and picture two as well. And then now let's make it so that way our character, since they're not talking, shows up at a lower opacity. So instead of 255, let's change that to be like 160. So 
Let's see how this looks in game. Our character will show up in this event, but since they don't say anything, they're going to appear a little bit more transparent. Let's take a look. Hey there, I'm Oak. What's up? That looks pretty good. What we could do is mess around with this a bit more. This is all to your personal preference once again. If you think that 160 is too high of a value, heck, you could lower this to like 100. There we go. But let's make it now so our character says something to Oak and then they switch the opacities. So that way, when Oak's not talking, he goes down to 100 opacity. So first, let's insert the text for our character who will say, in all caps, he'll just scream, yo, slash text, it's you boy. There we go. Very compelling dialogue, as you can see. Now, what we are going to do instead is we could do show picture, but we're going to do a move picture. Let's move picture one and just do one frame and to be 255 opacity. Cool. And then what we can do is just copy and paste that and instead set this to be move picture two in one frame to be 100 opacity. So if that was confusing, I'm sorry, but we're going to break it down now. Essentially, at the start of this event, it draws my character portrait at opacity 100, and it draws Oak at opacity 255. Once again, opacity 255 is the highest possible value, so he will appear not transparent. He'll say, hey there, I'm Oak, what's up? And then afterwards, it'll quickly change the opacities. So picture one will switch to opacity 255, picture two will switch to opacity 100, and then that means my character is talking now, and then he says, yo, it's your boy. There we go. And then afterwards, we erase picture one and picture two. Pretty good stuff, am I right? This is the kind of cutscene you'd like to put in your game. <laughs> uh, and if it's not, I'm putting it in my game. Let me tell you that much. All right. Hey there, I'm Oak. What's up? Yo, it's your boy. Pretty good stuff, right? Cool. But what if it's not your boy? What if instead, what if it's your girl? Well... What we could do is do the uh, stupid, <laughs> I don't know why I'm calling it stupid in the tutorial, but we could do the uh, the conditional branch method, but I've devised a better method. Check this out. I'm going to link this in the description as well, but what I've done is I've just made a little bonus method here called def draw player picture. And the way that draw player picture works is it checks your gender in the method. So we don't have to set up a conditional branch in every single event. That's sloppy, and if you can avoid it, you definitely should. Uh, scripting is awesome. Anyway, so if the trainer's gender is zero, then what it does is it draws the picture character male dash plus the trainer's outfit number, which is by default zero, and then it also sets the opacity based on the value passed in, in the method. So for example, if I did draw player picture parentheses 160, it would draw my player's picture at opacity 160. And you might be thinking, why do I do this trainer outfit stuff? Well, the reason that I do that is because in Pokemon Splice, the character can unlock multiple outfits. And I, would, I wanted the player picture that's displayed in the dialogue portrait to match their outfit. And I'll show you an example of that. In Pokemon Splice, this is the default trainer uh, outfit, which is outfit number zero. But if you join one team, you can switch to outfit one. And if you join the other team, you can switch to outfit two. So if you enter a conversation, it'll match up the character's portrait based on their outfit, which I think is really cool. But yeah, by default, the outfit is zero. So that means we have to have character male dash zero and character female dash zero in our game's pictures folder. And I've already made those. Character female dash zero character male dash zero cool so that's all you have to do to call this method um i'll once again i'll leave a link to get this into this in the description but uh yeah let's just call draw player picture in our game so if we're playing as the girl character what we will do is instead um show our girl portrait so what we want to do is include this as a script command. So you want to include a new event command, go to script, and just do draw player picture. And since our character is not talking by default at the start, instead of doing 255 here, we'll just do 100. There we go. So, and let's change this. So instead of saying, it's your boy, 
let's make it say it's your girl. And let's do another cool thing. Since this text was set to blue by default, sometimes when we're playing as a girl character, we'd want it to display as red text so that the text color matches. Instead of doing slash B or slash R, you can do slash PG so the text will change color based on your character's gender. So, slash PG. Yo, it's your girl. So, real quick, let's just show this example in game with our male character, and then we'll switch to the female character. Yo, I'm Oak, what's up? Yo, it's your girl. Hell yeah. Now, let's go to debug. Let's go into player options. Let's go into set player character, and let's change that to one. There we go. So we should now be playing as the female trainer. There you are. Let me save real quick. I like this trainer better anyway. Now, let's go talk to Oak again. Look at that! It's using our updated character uh, portrait dialogue. Yo, it's your girl! And the text color changed as well. And if we talk to Misty, since it's already all set up properly, it's looking just great. Hell yeah. I think that's pretty awesome. So like I said before, a lot of this is based on personal preference. If you think that those pictures look too big, then you are free to edit them to be the size of your choosing. Um, once again, always make sure that you call Erase Picture 1 and Erase Picture 2 at the end. Um, I've set up a lot of events in my game where I do a lot of back and forth. So one thing that I would recommend if you are to use the Show Picture command is to get used to copying and pasting these and keeping track of which states the pictures are in. So for example, if I wanted to switch back to Oak talking here, then what I would do is copy and paste this chunk, and then I would make it so a picture one goes back to 100 opacity, picture two goes up to 255. So a lot of um, doing this is keeping track of the different picture numbers and their opacities at a certain time. And as always, you can, you know, play through your game. You can double check everything. What I, when I was working on Pokemon Splice, I made so many errors in my uh, dialogue portraits. And I think there might even be still dialogue portrait errors in the latest version of the game today. But um, yeah, just keeping track of the numbers. So picture two is Oak. And his opacity keeps on changing based on who's talking. So uh, let's just edit this real quick once more. Cool, bruh. That's what, that's what Oak will say to us. So now you can see it like bounces back and forth. Picture two here is 255. So Oak is talking and then he goes to 100. He's not talking. Then it goes to 255. He's talking again. That's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, one thing I'll, one more thing I'd like to touch on before this tutorial ends is there is a, another um, plugin that you can use made by Mr. Gella here or Mr. Jella. I don't know. I'm, I'm so bad at saying names. He, he's awesome. But um this is another one that you can use for portrait in text messages. The main reason that I didn't want to cover it too much in this tutorial is because, like I said before, I personally am not the biggest fan of including commands uh, in the, like, for text commands. So instead of doing slash F or slash FF, this would do slash ML and slash MR. So then you would see, like, the mugshot left and the mugshot right, boy A and girl A. Um, this can use GIFs, which is pretty neat, but you can already display GIFs um, in the show picture command, depending on the GIF size. But uh, yeah, I'll link that in the description as well. But uh, yeah, I personally really like the show picture method. It's kind of cool to see it like go back and forth through a conversation. And um, yeah, I think that about does it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I appreciate you. Be sure to follow me on Twitch, even though <laughs> I gotta get I gotta get back to streaming on that thing more. One thing I think I might do is not upload the uh, Twitch VODs to YouTube and just make it so it's more of like my chill late night gaming zone because I've been playing a lot of video games late at night, but I have not been streaming and uh, I need to remedy that. I need to fix that. Anyway, I just want to say once again, thank you so much for watching and thank you for putting up with the fact that I can't end videos <laughs> in, a, in a smooth way. But hey, we made it this far, right? Anyway, thank you. I appreciate you. And until next time, I hope that you all... Have a good one.